Hey, wonderful. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Got Shadow here. And today, it's exactly one week from GP Ghent, where I'm going to participate with two of my friends from Berlin. And therefore, we're going to play a list that my friend is probably going to bring to Ghent and figure out if if anything uh, has to change. Uh, this is a little different from what he's testing right now. I do like Mana League over Logic Knot in a Tempo Shell. I also do like Remand uh, for the same reason for the most part. Uh, we'll have to figure out if no opt actually is playable. Uh, we're playing 22 lands and well, we're curving out at you know uh, three mana essentially. There's one better skull in there, but for the most part, we want to cheat that in anyway. Uh, three stone forges because we only have two equipments, and I don't want to have too many dead stone forges in the deck. Uh, Path to Exile right now, not the strongest card. On the other hand, <clears throat> uh, I also don't want to give my opponent too much stuff to uh, work around with um, because it also makes my spell peers and mana leak worse. But the good part is that we can still pitch like redundant copies to force a negation. Uh, and then there's Geist of Centraft in here because that's just a very good carrier for our uh, equipments. Um, then Spellquarter and Teferi with the neat interaction. And well, Electrolyze against a couple of small creatures, but also because we can use it as burn. Uh, Grim Lava Mask for the same reason in there as one of, and then to the sideboard, uh, pretty re stock here. We got a little bit against anything. Rest in peace, Stony Silence, Novin's Veto, and the control matchups where we really need to counter something. Um, a Braid against other Stoneforge decks. Then there's Damping Sphere. Mainly against Strom, but also against Twiddlestorm, for instance. Flusterstorm as one of. Then there's Settle the Wreckage against something like Dredge, which still puts up numbers. And Celestial Purge against anything that's red. So let's jump into the league and see where we end up here. And I'll be back in just a second. Alright, let's jump into the first league here. So I, I went a little deeper and got a couple of stone forges. I'm also gonna play the modern format challenge today. No, it's not a challenge, it's uh, the, the playoffs. Because <clears throat> I have insanely many modern points. So let's see where we end up here. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable without opt, I got to admit. So maybe, like, if this doesn't work out, we might have to cut, like, uh, remand and maybe a Grim Lava Mancer to get opt back into the game. Maybe Electrolyze doesn't prove to be good. We'll see. But as a first hand here, this is pretty alright. Um, on the draw, we have removal, we have Batter Skull, potentially. And this seems to be like some sort of junk build. Potentially Maru Pyromancer. And if he does have Ren 6, then he's probably going after our Spell Snare as uh, Spell Pierce. Or it sucks to a certain degree, but. Alright, going for Stoneforge. Which is good in that we. Why don't we have an upkeep stuff in, in my own turn? Don't remember putting that there. Alright, so this is going to be Steamman's no matter what. And losing Stoneforge Mystic here is alright just because we do have. <clears throat> Go ahead. Well, Golf definitely is also something that um, a 
Pop the Exile, of course, is good against. So we shall see. And here, uh, this probably should be a second spell snare. So already changing that to a second spell snare, because otherwise he wouldn't have gotten the Goyf God down here. But Lightning Helixes should give us a little bit of wiggle room. Ah, oh, come on, you gotta be kidding. Hmm. I think we can fetch for our planes here. Alright, we'll land. Is not bad in general. Don't yet have the means. Like, we could go after the Blood Crypt here, also because he's just sitting on two lands. And then he has. Yeah, I think that's actually alright. Last jump player that's playing confidence apparently. Um, but I'm gonna let that live, I think. Don't really mind the confidence, and it doesn't have bread yet. Life from below, interesting. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with Lightning Helix him. Can we survive the next turn if we do so? Like we're going on, uh, going up to fourteen. Then down to thirteen. Your lightning ball will be lethal. It could be dredging instead of doing anything else. If we play Snapcaster Mage, like ah, life on the edge here. Doesn't help us with everything, but it helps us with some of the problems. We get rid of one, we block one, we have spell snare up, and then we can go lightning helix or alternatively. So he cannot fetch off, he has to go for basic swamp here. Otherwise, he's dead. Assassin's Trophy is a little bit peculiar. 
and the problem is that we're only playing one planes. Otherwise, this would actually be pretty all right. Let's see, um, can we do anything here? Like if we go... Man, we have the tools, but we can't get everything out here. I think we need to play a Snapcaster Mage block. But then we're still dead. Because we can't play the Lightning Helix anymore. Well, <clears throat> that didn't work out, bro. Close, but not enough. Just the planes there. Um, we could bring in Celestial Purge, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, I think we're gonna cut the Lava Man, so the Spell Pierce. And bring in two resting pieces. That seems alright in general. Because without the goal, if. That purge is probably also alright. Good hand by itself. I'm getting rid of a couple of basics here. Um, we don't need. Oops. So not having a turn one play here, probably pretty good for us. Of course, our snapcaster may just also get worse, but it's still better than <clears throat> his run and six and Baron Moore and whatever. Tarmogoyfs. Polygon's commands, all that jazz. So now we have Spell Quiller up, and we also do have Electrolyze. And even if he gets rid of the Rest in Peace at some point, Yeah, I think that's actually worth it. So because now, like, he cannot replay the Liliana even if he gets rid of our spell queller, so that's pretty neat. No, yeah. that was a fast game. All right, I'm gonna get rid of both of these and get. Purchase in. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna keep that. Our opponent will start with seven cards in hand. Force of Negation, sadly we don't have another blue card in hand, otherwise... Alright, so Ren 6 is not a big deal here. Yeah, he plays it, okay. So this definitely means that he probably also doesn't have a fetch land. And I'm honest here, I think I'm gonna go after Ren and 6. 
instead of going with a stone forge here. Um, just so that we don't even get into the situation where seismic assault. Sure. Um, so we're actually playing against John Loam with Tormogoys, which is a little weird, especially once he saw our Rest in Peace. So Rest in Peace, of course, gets even better. Okay. So he doesn't get the land back. Yeah, it's on the stack, friend. You. So I feel like we need to land here to um, counter the life from the loan that's coming here. I'm going to wait until we find another blue card so that I can protect the Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, and there we go. Motherfucker. Now we have to hope that actually. That he doesn't have another one in hand here. But... All right. Good, 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 good. So if he's playing a life from loam, then we will be able to snatch. The seismic assault in response. Um, again, I think that a planes here is actually better than. Very interesting. It's also possible that he's just like going post board seismic assault. But um, yeah, so he's probably taking the sword, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> so first victory after a somewhat weird match here. John Loam with a very inconsistent game plan. Alright, looks like a decent hand if we find another land. In general, I think that the ratio, like, ah, well, we do have a couple of blue spells. All right, already found what we needed, and now we're trying to ride that to victory. Elixis. Are we playing against ourselves? It's actually possible. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna let that resolve. Um, although he's probably gonna take the Geist. Which is definitely one of our best cards here in the matchup. I guess we could have also countered like post negation spell or something like that. And if it had been a turn later, then I probably would have done it, but... Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Let's see if you have something. Because it's definitely not a logic knot. And if it resolves, then we're... Looking not bad. So we do have something to protect him. Even if he's playing like a, oh, well, it's Crix's shadow. Or not. <laughs> Alright, force force. Something go. That's still weird, like, he didn't shock all the time. Why would he play the way he does? He's also playing way too many lands. Straight away, fail push. Weird, people, weird. Um, this one. So... Is it worth it to shock here? Uh, we want to have a path up, we want to have a lightning bolt up, and we want to have a spell color up or a force negation. So we're going to shock <clears throat> and rumble in again. Okay. So we're generating card advantage just by attacking with. The Geist. Still somewhat awkward what our opponent's doing here. Alright, no clue. No clue what's going on. Like, he might be playing as some sort of weird hybrid. Um, I guess that recipes again would be pretty advantageous for us. Like Gormag Angler, Snapcaster Mage, all that jazz. From Lava Mats is probably not the correct thing here to do. <clears throat> uh, well, maybe we're just gonna go with Celestial Purge. That should definitely be good. K command, like we could be evading his K commands by just skipping Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take that out completely. Because he's probably gonna hold it back just to counter the Stoneforge. Now we're a game up, so we might be able to just get there with other means. So we've seen a lot of lands, we've seen weird Street Wraiths and only one discard spell, and overall that almost did not look like a Death Shadow deck. 
but this looks very much like a Death Shadow deck. So, I know. It's either a really weird hybrid or nothing of the sort at all. He's still looking for a second land here. And this is what I mean, like, for the most part, if you're playing Death Shadow, like, um, I think I'm gonna go with Sacred Foundry here. Because that enables basically all of our spells in hand. And we would like to fetch, keep fetching here. <clears throat> Yeah, it's definitely not a usual Death Shadow deck. Like, this is just weird. I'm not gonna fetch, um, since I still don't know what's really going on. <sighs> he could also be playing some sort of nimble. Shenanigans. Yes. Hit an angler. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's not playing Nimble, but you can never be certain. And therefore, we're just playing around stuff. So, what could he add? Worst case scenario here. Getting the Teferi down would of course be great. But we do have enough protection to like get rid of most of the other stuff. But he shouldn't be able to get rid of a Teferi, right? Yeah, I think we're trying it. <clears throat> Alright, that's pretty decent. Because now we have an ability to bounce a potential Goma Gangler plus. Perfect. So just in time. I guess he's going to take our Snapcaster Mage. And having to ferry down here could prove very valuable, especially if it doesn't do anything anymore. So I bet he does have at least one um at least one two one two three yeah. <clears throat> at least one call guns command in hand that he's keeping up, potentially more. Probably some sort of stubborn denial. Definitely drawing a lot of land. So since he has the ability to play a Death Shadow here for quite a bit already, um, we do have this, 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 and we have a red source, I think. <clears throat> Uh, 
uh, I think we can go for it here since we're just cycling and the only targets for our electrolyze are basically snapcaster mages which you cannot flash in so. Why should I give him the option? So Dovin's Widow is getting worse. Plus a Storm, also a good backup card. Although, if our opponent cannot interact on the stack, it's definitely not as good. But, that's an embarrassment of riches right there. Sure. Go with your Serum Missions. So we will have three Teferi activations after the next turn. Which will be pretty annoying for our opponent for whatever he does. Also, you first has to get. <clears throat> Death Shadow down anyway. Alright, so now we do have probably Geist coming down, and then we counter something and follow it up with the Fluster Storm. Because he's probably trying to like. Engineer turn here, we can get at least two Death Shadows down. And it's probably now. Alright, we cannot counter this. Um, he does have a basic here. So probably only one more fetch land, I guess. Okay. Only one. Okay, I mean, uh, okay opponent, you knew about our lightning bolt in hand, and you can't interact, so you're dead, GG's. Guys, really... Riding us to victory here, both games. So that's pretty neat. Since we're so proactive, it's possible that I'm playing too many counter spells here right now, and that stuff like Remod isn't even necessary. Also, I have to think about Flusta Storm again. Probably a third equipment in sideboard does more, like a f sort of feast and famine. <clears throat> but I do like potentially having sort of stuff like Giver of Ruins in the main board to protect our stone forges from dying when they come down, because that's mostly what happens. And with Giver Runes, we're forcing our opponents into awkward positions for the most part. And also, of course, it can be equipped. So that's also pretty neat. Not sure about Force of Negation either in the main board, because for the most part we just have too many non-blue spells like happened a couple of times already in just two games that we weren't able to fire it mm. but overall the deck seems or feels pretty decent alright 
then a little too little removal, but overall I think that's all right. Again, against Junt. I'm telling you people, it's, it's possible that he's taking force of negation here. Like, I wouldn't be countering an Inquisition, of course, turn one, but Lightning Helix. Hmm, interesting, 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 interesting. Are people playing more Duck Confidence again? Nope. So this is interesting, right? If we go with Stoneforge and he has a field push in hand, and we follow up with the fairy. Could counter this, but I think that's all right. Definitely trying to protect some sort of Ren Six here. And the good part is that, like later in the game, the worse Ren and Six, so you can get it down. Season Pyromancer. Okay. Discording to land. Well, I guess we're gonna bounce it and then we uh, have a Malik or Remont. Hmm. Could also his mountains in the graveyard. If we go after a Raging Ravine here, I think. Like he is not even able to replay it or recast it from the graveyard. But probably a remount here is just the best. For starters. Because we need another land at some point. Fairy did his deed. Select three for one. All right, let's see what you got, friend. Don't necessarily need blue anymore. And since we have so many paths in hand, I'm gonna go with that. Shit. Yeah, our opponent doesn't have any blue sources anymore, so Ren 6 and them are gonna come down. And I think Mana League is. Like, 
probably getting worse, but I'm going with Path to Exile here because our Snapcaster Mage doesn't have anything in the graveyard yet that he can utilize, and so. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Good target here. Strange that so many people were playing John again. Like, I haven't been playing against John for quite some time. Another lightning bolt. Yeah, sure. Good thing is, well, with the fairy of course gone, um, our buddy skull is a little more susceptible to a potential Kolagans command. But other than that, so he has one dead core in hand that he won't be playing anytime soon. Uh, we need to try to fire our mana leak at some point. Okay. <clears throat> So, still think that these are pretty decent. Gonna get rid of the stone forges again. Um, and then we'll probably have no braid. Is a braid good enough? Uh, let's go with the settle here. For the most part, we need to take care of the guys. So, third path here. It's a good hand, but we need three mana. No. Okay. Don't have a lot of removal, but for the most part, I think I'm gonna get rid of the Snapcaster Mage here. Because <clears throat> on the one hand, we're playing four, on the other hand, um, so good here is that even if he does have a turn two or an in six, we have two ways of getting rid of it. Either he takes the spell pierce and it will never come down. All right. Definitely coming and six in, or it's just going to be a one activation here. Which might be enough. You never know. Stupid card. <clears throat> could this be Liliana? It could also be um, Season Pyromancer. But against Pyromancer, Electrolyze is pretty decent. Oh, come on. Got to be kidding. Alright, this is a problem now. Very good. 
I mean, the damage is done, he already got two activations out of the Ren and Six, but... If there is a chance for us to get back into the game here, then it's certainly by getting rid of the Ren and Sixes. And our opponent already at 13 life. So maybe we can also just burn him out at some point. So he's sticking up. Oh no, he's sticking down. That's good. Alright, the Tarmogoyf is a problem, but something that we can deal with at some point. Tarmogoyfs really have proven to be problematic for us. Interesting. This is very interesting indeed. We're taking 7, so we're dead next turn if we don't block. Snapcaster Mage would be good, but other than that, like only a path probably saves us here. We we'll need to kill an elemental token and then. If we shock here, go to two, block here. Path or Snapcaster Mage, otherwise, I don't see us getting out of this. Alright. Another Ren 6. Yes, great. We also had a set of wreckage, yeah. And potentially a rest in peace. Okay, we're gonna keep this. And I'm also gonna go Steam Vents untapped to counter a potential discard spell. Our opponent's on a mulligan. It doesn't have a discard spell, but does have a Ren 6, which is entirely possible. That would be the best case scenario. Now we also have other means of getting rid of Ren 6.
until now the lack of opts hasn't really hurt us a whole lot like there might have been one or two situations where well this is fine we can both bounce it with our teferi or we can just kill it and i think i'm gonna go with the kill here since we won't have too many other situations where that comes up can actually kill a tarmogoyf and now we can protect ourselves against uh, against a Renin six plus I guess. Sure. Interesting thing is that this does not prevent any of our opponent's shenanigans here. So we could go after his land here, but that also doesn't seem great. Another guy, dude. Are you fucking with me? Of course, I let the craft dig cage resolve for the most part because <clears throat> we're bringing in recipes anyway. So, if we ever get, get there, I mean, our opponent only has one more card in hand, he's already shot everything he has. For the most part. So we would like to find either a path to exile. Lightning Bolt actually also isn't too bad. Because that can take care of the Tarmogoyf if we really need to. Yeah, I guess. Do we let that resolve? And I think now we have to say no. On the one hand, the spell pierce isn't getting better. On the other hand, right. You know, from now it's Ren 6. So we can't attack yet with our colonnade. We could put him down to 10. Like, we. Do have a decent shot here at racing. Four turns. We have four turns against the Tormogoy. Snapcast image isn't good enough. 
We're just going to get rid of it. Six. And Ren 6, of course, would have made racing here really difficult because that's basically 3, 4, 5 additional damage. Then we do have potentially lethal next turn. If we find in the land, we do have straight up lethal. <clears throat> and if not, then our opponent still has to find removal. That is not abrupt decay or a lightning bolt. That's bad. So the thing is, if he does have removal, then he's not gonna uh, take Liliana up. And if he's not gonna take a Liliana up, then we're just gonna go with the Stoneforge Mystic first. Yeah, you're dead. All right. Despite having severe problems with the Tarmogoyfs here, still got there two times around against Jones. I'm gonna take a short break and then we're gonna be back with round number four. All right, welcome back to round number four. <sighs> Fighting our way here through Modern League with a still very unrefined deck, I might say. It's not super good yet. The counter suit doesn't fit me yet. Don't like it. Generally speaking, I still think that I want to have a prohibit in here. Such a neat card if you want to win or keep your uh, opponent fighting with uh, low resources. Win against the, uh, within the first couple of turns, I was going to say. All right. <clears throat> what this deck really does have a problem with, though, is probably Eldrazi Tron. Um, or Tron in general. If we had like a turn th on the play, hit a turn three Geists, and then a force up, that's probably enough, but other than that, without a damping sphere, I don't really see it. And Tron will probably bring in Nature's Claim against Stoneforge Mystic anyway, so that's some sort of bad for our cyborg plan. So our opponent mulligan to 5, probably a Tron player, right? Forest Hard Scales. Well, that is... Okay. Remands will hopefully dig us. 
four and all. All of our opponent's important spells are turn two material. And we also do have a couple of decent sidewalk cards. So we do have um, a braid. We do have Stoomy Silence. And we also have Silver Wreckage, which will definitely come in here in this matchup. Man, dude, what is going on? Oh. All right, animation module, sure. Gonna go with Sacred Foundry because I wanna have double red, triple red. Yeah, I think. Like, I mean, Walking Ballista by itself just doesn't do anything. Um, we're gonna counter this with a Spell Snare. Just because he could potentially also um, play it on 4 with one more land, and then it will be out of reach to counter. I mean, we could play Bounce Ball here with Rimad for a bit, but I think that's alright. Another walking boost, uh, sure. So now we're actively looking for Snapcaster Mage to counter that one, correct. Hoping that he doesn't find another land here. Which he doesn't. On hard scales, sure. Spell Snare is really good in the current meta. It's good against the control decks, it's good against, well, basically anything. And here, we, for the first time, we actually have a decent spot for Stoneforge to come down. <clears throat> and I'm not really sure what we want here. Like, Better Skull, of course, is the stronger play overall. And also the better tempo play. It's because we have to utilize less mana. But um, the sword would act as additional removal, especially against like cards like these. And we really need to try to race here because we won't stand a chance against the hard scales down the road. We just can't kill anything anymore. And again, it's probably good to have a third path here. I don't want to play four in this shell, but three seems to be alright. Seems to be the correct number. And we're definitely gonna get rid of the remote. That's not something that I want to be playing. Mm -hmm. Next time, friend. Next time. That's also very good. Teferi is actually very good here. So uh, we want to utilize the Stone Forge. We have seven cards in hand. So we'll probably get a good hit in. So why would he be doing this? This is somewhat weird. Um, I'm gonna go and kill this just because he might have knock on Ravager in hand and 
is preparing for a lethal turn because this one, two, three, three, so four. Okay. So Electrolyze will take care of the two servo tokens that are coming around here. I'm gonna go Lightning Bolt to the face and then we have Lethal on board. And then we just need to deal with uh, Hanging Back Walker. That's fine. Okay, so bold, bold. Another bolt. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> Why would I be doing that? Burned him to the face. All right. Um. Bu -bu -bu -bu. So a couple cards that are not super great here. Um, I do want to have raids. I want to have Stony Silence. And I want to have Cell. I think Batter Skull is probably alright, but Sword not super great. Force of Negation for the most part also not card for this matchup and I think I can also cut remands here. So one could be thinking about bringing in rest in peace just for the modular triggers but <clears throat> snapcast mage Let's bring in one rest in peace as well. So I think uh, for Stoneforge itself, it's certainly one of the best shells. We're gonna keep this, although it's not a perfect hand. But on the draw, having a lot of removal and then potentially drawing into like a Stony Silence or a couple of spell closers or something. That will be alright.
Um, Otter. Flooded Strand is a good find here. I'm also very happy with these uh, basic land split here. Of course, one time we needed a second planes, but for the most part, I think this is alright. Um, got an Ink Moth Nexus with Ancient Syrinx. Also interesting. Um, the Flooded Strands, we boarded out the other one. The Flooded Strand will become a Sacred Foundry. What are we playing against here? Alright, so if we play guys here, what's the worst thing that can happen? Like we have double removal next turn or electrolyze. I think we're gonna risk it. He probably has at least like <clears throat> A dismember in hand and I just hope that we won't die here if he goes hardened scales mox opal no yeah that's just not gonna cut it So we have 9, 11, 13 damage in hand. And he's not going to be able to save the Outbound Ravager unless he sacks all three of his next eye. Or he has a second Outbound Ravager. So I think I'm going to let this resolve. And the walking rooster. Okay. So now... He can't activate any of those, right? Um, he also won't be able to... I mean, this is a sick, pretty good turn, but... So we'll go after an Alcorn Ravager here. Two, 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 so, yep. And I think are we gonna play run our guys here into it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm willing to take that trade. Now we're also gonna go with a lightning bolt after that one. And then play the elements here. Okay, pretty strong. Another Outbound Ravager? Are you fucking with me, man? So, what's a little annoying here? I 
is that we can't, like, we're not able to really utilize our electrolyzers. So I don't mind here, like I'm basically cycling for one damage because I don't really mind if he's um, sacking creatures to the Arcbound Ravager or if he's like not doing anything or whatever. Um, so this is actually pretty good. Because we do have the Abrade. to follow up on a Grim Lava Man's activation. But I'm not letting it not resolve. We could also go after his phase of force, but that also doesn't seem too reasonable. Um what happens if we go? Like he's of course gonna put it on the Ink Moth Nexus and then we're gonna be hit for an additional three. But that's still in range. Whatever anything else, everything else. Another Geist. So. so I'm willing to block here with the Grim Lava Mansa just because we have so little mana. Okay, now we actually do have a big problem. Nature's claimed himself. And now we have to path the Ingmoth Nexus next turn. So the animation module can actually kill us. He's playing it now, next turn he can activate it, we're dead. So can we win here? We put him down to nine, then we put him down to four. We need to draw a land. No we don't, right? Maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of the abrade here, just in case we draw a... Yeah, now it's a problem. Otherwise we would have to have a lethal here. Oh, Stony Silence, that is a good pickup. Unless he has another Nature's Claim, of course. Then we still lose. But then we could prolong the thing with mana leak, I guess.
so that he indeed won't be able to animation modulus. And if he doesn't do it in his turn here, then we're just gonna attack and then we have lethal through a lightning bolt, uh, lightning helix. Alright, um, if, even if he does have an Nature's Claim here and goes for for our Sony Silence here, we have Lethal next turn, therefore I'm just going to counter that. And now we have extra Lethal. Alright. Got a little lucky there, so he doesn't didn't have a nature's claim, of course, but <clears throat> still. A little sad that there is no equipment that's actually also hating on stuff, like getting a sword that's also preventing like a pithing needle sword or something like that. But overall, like one really has to say, the power level of Stoneforge Mystic is for modern is really not too amazing. Like it's a decent card, but without GT in the format. It's just not even a really, really good card. So Electrolyze, I think, is a decent addition to the deck in various ways. Right now we have two open slots. I think those could be filled with opts. Um, just to have a little more stuff to do with our Snapcaster Mage. It's also entirely possible that... No. No, it isn't. I think st three stone forges are also alright with only two equipments. And other than that... Yeah. Off to the fifth round. Let's hope for a good hand on the play here. We're not on the play. Hand is mediocre. <laughs> And our opponent's playing. No deck against which our lightning bolt would be good, so we have a bad hand. And if our opponent's playing burn here, uh, not burn, storm, which at this point is probably the most likely scenario. Deciding which card he wants to play, which land. Alright. 
Yeah. I'll put him on Storm. So I'm pretending here that I'm able to white deck for him to play a mono dork. Hopefully. Okay. This is not storm. I think we're playing against an electro dominant deck. And that's actually at least as bad for us. Rimando is actually pretty good against Electro Dominance. Oh man, so I think that if we tap out here for Snapcaster Mage, we're probably going to be hit by Electro Dominance with a Rhino something attached to it. If we don't tap out here, then we can counter the Rhino thing, but he probably has a counter for that. So we're going to try to race. And if he's playing like there we go. Of course that wasn't great, but that also wasn't too bad. Now the spell puller won't be able to be countered from his side, I think. This should be Ancestral. Not my touch with him. Sure. Could of course mean that he does indeed have another electro dominance thing in hand. But we can't play around everything here. Yeah. Either a spell peers or another electro dominance. Probably. Oh man. One short there. Um, eight. It's gonna be difficult to raise that. Can we raise that? Four, six. Yeah, if we draw a lightning bolt. No, a lightning bolt wouldn't be good enough. Those have to trample. We probably need to draw a that if on the second electro dominance of course is somewhat unfortunate for us. And that uh, we only found the force of negation afterwards as well. Let's 
snap cancel mage you say so six we block one if we find a path we get there So both path helix all are lethal right now, right? If he doesn't have anything else. Um, and what's the main thing that we need to do here? Doesn't really matter, but blue certainly isn't the card that we need. Also, Lightning Bolt is now not in the graveyard since we exiled it, so we can't flash it back. Lord. Lord. Lore. Lore. That was quite disgusting. All right, in this matchup, though, like if it comes down, then for the most part, we've lost anyway. So, we want to have the wins, Veto. I think we actually want to have Stoneforge because he needs to handle that. Also, better skulls just really good in the matchup. Uh, Teferi, insanely good here. I think Grimlau Mansa, and we could be thinking about Damping Sphere. Like, could honestly be thinking about the Damping Sphere. Um, but Riman is pretty good. <clears throat> Don't forge turn to lightning helix. I also want to have the burn. Electrolyze. Yeah. I think we make him pay for all the additional spells that he's playing for free. Fairy Domin's Veto. Yep. With the fairy on the block, he's just not going to be able to uh, cast anything off of Electrodominance. Turn one dominance, great. And if this is crashing for walls, yeah, sure, we lost. This is disgusting. Cool. Very, very cool. So if we were to draw a land, you now we could bounce one and maybe we have a chance. But of course this is not where we want it to be. Alright, 
So he might be redirecting his Rhino to kill our Teferi. Which will give us a turn to get down Geist. Which will then be able to... What the fuck is that? Oh, goodness sakes. You got to be kidding me, man. This dude is the most lucky fucker ever. How does he always have electrodominance or two electrodominances in hand? Oh, okay, he's just killing that. Nah, that's alright. Red land. So, essential visions we can still catch with the Spellcaller. But now we have to hope that he doesn't have a Lightning Boot in hand, which probably won't be the case. Oh man, come on, man. Alright, pretty pissed about the last game here, but other than that, pretty good league. I think we were able to um, improve the deck a little bit. Um, I still think that we probably don't need more than two counter spells because we're pretty proactive for the most part here. Um, yeah. The rest of the deck really functions pretty well, so I would recommend this as a deck. I'll be testing a little bit by myself just to give uh, my friend there a good recommendation on which cards to play and which not to play but for the most part the shell is pretty solid. So have a great weekend guys and keep up the good work.